This is America in Space, a weekly news and information program on current events dealing with the space industry. Welcome, and thanks for joining me today. I'm Don Meyer, Space Coast News Editor. You've probably seen the use of putting people into hibernation, also called suspended animation or stasis, in science fiction movies like Alien, Passengers, and Planet of the Apes, and in TV shows like Star Trek. Now the thing is, hibernation could actually be the best way to save mission costs, reduce the amount of supplies required, reduce the size of a spacecraft by up to a third, and keep people healthy on their way to Mars. Sounds great, right? Well, there's a slight problem. Humans don't hibernate. Research by Jennifer Nauan, a researcher and payload coordinator of human robotic exploration at the European Space Agency, and one of the authors of a paper that links biology to engineering, states that hibernation is a great way to make travel to Mars more feasible. Reducing the metabolic rate of a crew on their way to Mars down to maybe 25% of the normal state would dramatically cut down the amount of supplies and habitat size, making long-duration exploration more feasible. Here's a brief description of how that might work. Astronauts might one day hibernate their way to Mars. Getting to Mars from Earth takes a long time, as long as 200 days. A group of scientists funded by NASA think astronauts could pass most of that time by hibernating in a sleep chamber. Each chamber is outfitted with tubes that lower the body's temperature as well as provide nutrition. An intranasal cooling system would lower the astronaut's temperature by 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which significantly reduces metabolism. The astronaut is fed via catheters attached to the thigh or chest, while another tube carries waste away. This result is what's called a torpor-induced state, using therapeutic hypothermia. One concern is muscle atrophy due to lack of use. Scientists think they can address this through neuromuscular electrical stimulation. As the astronauts approach Mars, the wake-up cycle begins. Warming pads slowly raise the body's temperature. It takes roughly one hour for every one degree rise in body temperature. Fully awake after their long nap, the astronauts are ready to begin their Mars mission. Now, that still requires that you induce hibernation in humans. Here's Heiko Jansen, a researcher in the process of bear hibernation, to explain a bit about how hibernation might work in humans. And I think humans potentially have some of the building blocks that we could use to induce hibernation. At this point, I see the bear as being much more closely related to a human type of hibernation. The other thing that I think is is very interesting is this ability to lower the metabolic rate, even though the bears are at a relatively high body temperature. And cancer cells are, are very active metabolically, and so ways in which we could turn down their sort of energetic usage uh, might be a way to, to limit some of the problems associated with, with cancer. Heart rates decrease tremendously during hibernation but the bears don't suffer any cardiovascular problems. They have no loss of bone density. They don't lose any muscle mass in hibernation. So there's a lot of interest in trying to understand in terms of, you know, people that are bedridden uh, or in space travel, uh, the loss of muscle mass is considerable, but bears seem to not succumb to that, even though they're laying around for about 98% of the day. Yeah, the the primary benefit there is that it allows us to be able to use a spacecraft that doesn't require carrying all the food that's necessary to bring someone to Mars. The passengers on the spacecraft uh, could actually enter that state of hibernation and so be transported for who knows how long, maybe a couple of months even, without having to eat anything. You'd require less oxygen, so you probably wouldn't need as much oxygen on board. Of course, oxygen is light, so that's not as big an issue. And if we could lower our temperatures, we would save even more energy. You would essentially be asleep. Your your brain activity would be sleep-like, your blood pressure would be lowered, and your your use of energy, much like what happens during sleep, would also be greatly reduced. Now, when we go to sleep, our metabolic rate drops by about 6% or so, plus or minus. But hibernation is, is a much deeper level of metabolic suppression, and those are the, the targets and the pathways that we want to try to identify. What makes it possible to go from 
a 6% reduction in metabolic rate to a 75% reduction in metabolic rate. It may involve some lowering of body temperature, and that's fine. Those kinds of temperatures are actually used now in humans uh, for surgeries um, and for um, doing organ preservation and transplantation. We know that you know by storing something at a colder temperature actually allows it to actually survive for a, a prolonged period of time. There are of course limits to that, but I think the, the principle there is going to be very similar. So one day people may be able to sleep their way to the red planet just like in the movies. From Florida Space Coast, this is Don Meyer for About Space Today. Thanks for listening. Be sure to share our program with your family and friends and follow us on Facebook. Join us each week for news and information on America in Space.